Hi, it's Erin Klein from Kleinspiration. I wanted to share a site with you that I've written about before, Class Dojo, and I'm using it a little bit differently um, than I used to. So once you go to the website, classdojo.com, D-O-G-O, I'm going to show you how I log in really quickly. So once you um, log in, this is the screen that you'll see, your home screen, and there is also a free app which I just downloaded and I'm excited to use on Monday. So it is a free app and it's a free site for teachers to use. So because I have the app, I'm just going to continue to my classes. And when I first wrote about Class Dojo, I wrote about it um, in regards to being a site for classroom uh, management for behavior. And I'm from the philosophy more on just really teaching, you know, good life skills, strong core values. And when children aren't responding to those, then having individual conversations privately with children um, based on the behavior and natural consequences. Um, so my management style is very different. It's more of a, a love and logic type philosophy, very intrinsic, uh, intrinsically motivated. I, I don't do um, chip jars. I don't do um, any sort of carrots and sticks, rewards, consequence type of thing. Um, I try and make it uh, as much of an authentic classroom environment as I can, just because that's what works for me. Um, I have friends that do many different things that are very different than what I do, and it really works well for them. So I think it's important just to find something, a system that works well for you. So when I had a friend the other day, uh, Susie Brooks, do a presentation on Class Dojo, I was really excited um, because she shared it in ways that I had not thought about using before. So I said, you know, I love Class Dojo. I love the guys that developed it, Sam and Liam. And I actually did an ISTE Ignite presentation and featured uh, Class Dojo in part of my presentation. But when Susie explained how she was using it in her classroom, I said, you know, that's exactly the way I would use it if I were going to. So the other day in my reading workshop class, we were doing uh, some anchor charts on building stamina and what good readers should do during workshop time and what it should look like, what it should sound like, how good partners interact. And we were kind of brainstorming ideas. And once the children had come up with some really great ideas, for some reason it just clicked in my head. <gasps> we should put these behaviors on Class Dojo. And it's kind of the same um, thing that Susie was talking about in her webinar the other day. So that's exactly what I did. I, I said, boys and girls, you know what we should do? And I kind of walked them through it and I showed them. And then we went on Class Dojo and right then and there live with my kids sitting on the carpet in front of the smart board. And I was just sitting with my keyboard. We just started typing it out. And I actually have two reading groups. Uh, so we just set up two different ones. And so I want to show you one of the reading groups, what it looks like. So I didn't set up every single student. I just set up one student, and I just called it 2012-13 second graders. So once you click on my student, um, which is actually the whole class because I don't do it individually, these are the behaviors that for reading workshop, for independent reading time, uh, my students said that it should look like. They said that if we have a discussion or share time, everyone should be participating. They said that people should be on task the whole time. And we did talk about what being on task looked like. And uh, we talked about being quiet so that it's respectful for the other children reading, not just because we need it to be quiet, but there's actual reasons that you're not disrupting other readers and so that you can do your best thinking as you're reading. And then whenever the mini lesson is done or whenever the teacher says, okay, we have a few extra minutes, you know, it's treasured reading time, we should really get started reading right away. And then also to build stamina, reading the whole time, not just reading for five minutes and then asking to go to the restroom. And we've really, I mean, it's the going into the uh, fifth, sixth week of school. So we've been modeling each one of these extensively. So my children definitely know what it means to participate and what it means to look like because um, we've really went in deep to each of these and they know what stamina is. We talked about what do you do for a long time? Oh, you play basketball. And we talked about why you do that. We talked about uh, even like the Red Wings hockey team. You know, they don't just go out and play a game on the ice. They actually practice. And it's like, why do you practice? And, you know, why you need to be able to do it the whole time and to build that stamina on so that you don't get winded and out of breath and so that your brain can handle, you know, and your body can handle that. So then we talked about what 
it should not look like. And this was actually their idea. I was not going to do the quote negative behaviors, but they said, you know, Mrs. Klein, if we do what it should look like, we should do what it shouldn't look like. And these are seven year olds. And I said, okay, if you guys want to, sure. What should it not look like? And they said, well, we shouldn't be off task. And we talked about what it looked like to be off task. And they actually chose these, um, symbol icons. This was not my choice. I let it, the kids have ownership in it. Um, and then to be unprepared, we talked about what that would look like, not having reading material ready to go and not having books like on deck that you're interested in at your seat and, you know, having to go shopping for new books and, uh, of course, being noisy and then not listening during the lesson. You know, if we're reading for a purpose for inferencing and not taking um, notes and tracking our thinking, etc. So these are what we came up with just for Reader's Workshop. And I want to go back. Well, actually, you know what? Let me show you this. To give an award, all you would do is click on one of these icons. And it does make a little ding sound. And if you click on one of the negatives, it does make like a dong sound. So the kids really like hearing the noise as well. Um, let me go back to the classes. Now, I also started taking attendance this way. I've got a couple different ways that I take attendance. But the kids wanted to know if they could do it on Class Dojo because they each wanted their own avatar. So... Once you click on my kids, you can see, and I just have it as first name basis, um, but these are my students, and they love having their own avatar and getting to pick those out. So once you go back, they, um, we also developed hallway procedures. So again, I didn't set up each individual child. I just did it as a class. So I only have one student entered, and I call them 2012-13 second graders. So we talked about what it should look like in the hallway. You should have your voices off, you should be one behind the other, and your hand should be by your side. And then what it shouldn't look like is being noisy, misbehaving, touching belongings that don't belong to you, running, spinning, hopping. Um, if a teacher has to close her door because, ooh, that would not be good. Um, if your hands are not side by side, um, or also you should not be side by side, like partner walking, you should be one behind the other. And then acting silly if the teacher is gone. So if a teacher happens to, if you get out of art early and you're waiting for the teacher to come because maybe she got caught up with a parent or a phone call, you should still be waiting respectfully in the hallway. So that's what we did for hallway behaviors. And we, you can see there's not many points rewarded yet um, because we just started this. And because I did say the word points, my students all know that we're simply monitoring our behavior because I did show them the nice graphics that go along with this and um, to where you can see the reports. And they know that we don't get um, points for prizes and they know that we don't get deducted points for consequences. This is simply just monitoring our behavior and we do this um, just so that we can always improve and get better and they don't need to hear it from me on what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. They should be able to self-monitor and that's what we're working on is independence um, for second grade. So that's just how we do it in my class and the special person of the day gets to actually hold my um, the little iPod in the classroom and do all of the data collecting and monitoring. So that's how we do it.